As is known that the majority of population in the state of Meghalaya is that of beef eaters. With the government banning consumption of beef in mainland India, people have an idea that the government is trying to control the very food habits of the citizens of a democratic nation. If beef is to be banned because of religious reasons, isn't it against the idea of secularism? And if it is for the environmental point of view, as you said, why not mutton ban or chicken ban, which are also reasons for greenhouse gas emission? Well, uh, let me change one aspect of the question. Nobody ever uses mainland India. That's only mainland China. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rest of India. <laughs> This… this is also mainland India only. It is just that which is being misunderstood now because of certain things that have happened is, when Jawaharlal Nehru talked about building roads and bridges and industry across the country, including dams, because at that time we thought dams were the biggest things we could do, now our ideas have evolved into something else. When there were plans for Northeast, he was advised that don't touch Northeast. It is pristine nature and tribal cultures. Do not try to modernize and destroy this. It's best it is left like that. So uh, initially it was a conscious decision not to touch Northeast because people were beautiful, they were living in their own ecosystems. There was no need to bring simply cars and trains and airplanes and make them like the rest of the world, they were doing great by themselves. But later on, development started happening in unplanned ways, little bit, little bit. At that time, they should have decided. But because the same party was in power, they respected the decision that Jawaharlal Nehru made. When he made the decision, it was a conscious decision. After that, it was just an emotional stuff, for which northern, northeastern region has kind of paid a little bit, bit of price. I wouldn't say it's a price because living in pristine nature without all the rubbish that you see in the rest of the cities, I think it's a great thing. <laughs> but… but today because of connectivity, because everybody is watching on the television, on the internet, how big cities are, how New York City is, how London is, how something else is, when you did not see any of those things, I think people here were doing fine by themselves. That way the only country which has made a, a conscious decision like this and successfully going with that is probably Bhutan. Everybody else has succumbed to Western ways of life and they think we also have to become like that. Now it's unstoppable everywhere, including Northeast. Here if you do not know, some twelve, fifteen thousand kilometers of highway is being planned. Once that happens, Entire India will be driving all over Northeast, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I went to Ladakh and you won't believe, I went to Siachen for the yoga day. Thousands of motorcycles, all kinds of people who have no idea how to balance on two wheels also or on <laughs> motorcycles. Everybody renting a motorcycle, getting a license right there. There's a motorcycle rental, next to that we'll organize licenses for you. Right there, instant license and hundreds and hundreds of motorcycles everywhere. It is no more the Ladakh, pristine Ladakh that it was, simply tourists and traffic jams on the mountains, unbelievable. Well, that's going to happen to you because you asked for development. Because this is the kind of development that's happening in the world, unfortunately. Everything in excess. And in fifteen, twenty years it'll happen, this government has decided to put railways, airways and roadways and everything. So, we can think it's development. It is also a certain loss to the country because tribal cultures will be totally lost, pristine forests will be lost, everywhere there will be picnickers, okay? <laughs> Not wildlife enthusiasts or something, picnic people will be all over the place. So, having said that, now, the reason why it is banned in many major states in the thing and at the same time they have not touched this here is, in those states there is a huge emotion about that. Democracy, you talked about secularism, democracy is always about considering the concerns of the people. 
when there is such a big emotion, it's better you take that into thing and everybody thinks this law came in the last four years. No, this law has been there since 1950. So this has been the way we have been running the country. We make a law and we don't have the courage to implement it. Now some hothead on the street, he decides to enforce the law. When mob tries to enforce the law, it will happen in cruel ways. It will happen in ridiculous and uh, in archaic ways of doing things. So this is something we must decide. If we make a law, do we have the courage to implement the law? Do we have the means to implement the law? Otherwise, better there is no such law. So now, in the major states, if you do not implement it, there will be backlashes, there will be violence. So implement it, there is some kind of grouse happening, a small group of people. It's better to manage them rather than create a on-the-street battleground, okay? You don't want that right now because we are poised for economic development. Everything is being done to see social unrest doesn't happen. So here traditionally, see even in India, the… <laughs> this is a very gender bias law. You can only not slaughter a female cow. You can slaughter a bull. You can slaughter a buffalo. Look at this, gender discrimination. <laughs> you can slaughter me but not you. <laughs> Only cow protection because in this culture, this is a pastoral culture, where we have an understanding. Now it's different but in the past, if there is a bad agricultural year, if there is a famine, we used to have serious famines in this country, if there is a famine, if I have two cows in my house, my children will live. You don't have cows, your children will die. This is a wisdom stuck in people's minds. So when because of my cow, my children lived, I worship this cow because this is the source of my life and my progeny. So there is a very deep engagement with the cow in the sense when I was growing up, we were never fed milk from multiple cows. That specific cow, it has a name and every day they will take you there and you at least give something, you know, one banana, one little grass or something to the cow and always my grandmother will be saying that, this is the… you're like your mother, you're drinking milk from this cow, you must be always grateful to this cow, this kind of thing. Like there's a huge emotion between you and that cow because you're drinking its milk biologically and emotionally you're connected. You're not drinking uh, dairy milk which is million cows and buffaloes and we don't know what else. So this has been the culture. Because of that, because we have drunk the milk of this cow, if we tomorrow want to eat the cow, that is considered cannibalism, not cow slaughter. I want you to understand this. It is deep-rooted in us because like our mother, this cow gave us milk. Tomorrow how to kill it and eat it up, this is considered cannibalism and we said you never kill the cow. But they allowed other big animals to be killed also. And this methane gas you're talking, this is not a problem in India, this is United States problem. All the statistics and stuff, we just import it from the West and we think it's like this. In United States, how the cows are kept is a completely different matter. If you go into a cattle thing, it's something you must go and see, then you will not ask this question again. You must go and see there will be half a million or one million cattle in one place. There will be not a speck of green because so many animals moving full of dung and everything. All in sheds, sometimes they move them out for exercise and again back. On the highway side, if they are there a kilometer away, the kind of sounds they are making, it will churn your stomach because they are intelligent enough to know that they are going to be slaughtered. You must see the screams of the cows. Once you go there, never again you will touch anything because it will… basically it will churn up something within you. Why I am saying this is, the cow is an animal where I have seen this personally, somebody that I knew. This is a lady, she named this cow as Lakshmi. It always was with her, thirty years that cow has become, it's very old but still with her. This lady died at eighty-seven. This cow came and just stood in front of the house, did not move from there, refused to eat. Two days later, it just fell dead right there. And I have seen cows, if you are very attached to it and you are in some grief, you are not even with the cow, cow is somewhere else, but it knows 
tears are flowing from the cow's eyes. So because it has human emotions, we said you cannot kill this because it is exhibiting human emotion. If you kill it, it amounts to cannibalism. When there is such a sensitivity, if you say, in front of my house you will slaughter, obviously there is going to be a problem. So in this part of the country there is no such sentiment, so they did not pass the law. I think it's a very sensible thing to do, isn't it? But every doctor in the world is telling you, red meat is the source of every goddamn disease you have, so you better change. It is not… it is not a religion, it's a certain sense of humanity. Humanity finds expression in various kinds of aesthetics. This is our aesthetic. What about the minorities living in those areas, Sadhguru? They can eat whatever they else they want. But when it is imposed, the ban is imposed, <laughs> they, they cannot. Suppose I like to eat you. <laughs> You're denying me my food. I enjoy human flesh, how can you pass a law against it, I'm asking? Hello? There, there is a law already that <laughs> you, you cannot eat humans, but… That is that what… there is already a law that you can't eat a cow. The question is passing off the law itself. No, no, I'm saying, see, you cannot eat a human being. Why? Because it's a human being. Now, we drank the milk of the cow, we have shared emotions with the cow, we don't see it as separate because in the villages the cow lives in your house. There is no barn somewhere, it lives with you in the same house. So what is grown up with you, lived with you, shared life with you, you don't suddenly kill and eat it. Then you can as well eat your mother, what's the problem? I'm saying, what's the problem? It's good food. So I have taste for human flesh, how can you stop me from eating it? Don't start such an argument, it's not good.